Okay. Okay. So, um, hey, I'm Robert, and some of you probably know me. Um, and I'm going to talk about um, my team and why my team and I uh, really love React. And some of you know that I uh, work on the CouchDB project. And because the question, I'm getting asked that question almost every time. So I'm not an employee of CouchDB. I'm, my employer pays me to work on CouchDB. That's quite a difference. Couch, CouchDB is an open source project, and uh, everybody can join us. <laughs> so join the force. Um, so um, as usually in open source, my, my team uh, works um, on the whole world and on different continents. And um, that means that I'm working uh, remote most of the time. And most people think, because I'm working remote, my usual day looks like this. Um, but in fact, I'm usually just at my home here in Hamburg and um, working there um, in my small um, working room. Um, so who of new knows um, Futon, the old CouchDB interface? Wow, that's quite a lot of people. So, Everyone who doesn't know Futon, it's like PHP my admin for CouchDB. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, um, where you basically have an administration interface for your database. And right now we are working on um, a new version which is officially re released in CouchDB 2.0. And um, it's... Um, around <laughs> almost five years old. So um, who of you is working on a code base older or older than five years? Okay, okay, I feel with you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and it's um, a JavaScript MVC, MVC application um, which is based on um, the library Backbone. And um, we... Um, used um, Backbone Layout Manager to, um, to create nested views um, in our applications. And um, the uh, old development team um, um, invented something, what, what they um, called route objects, which is basically um, something where you can render a view based on the current URL you're visiting with your browser. I think that's a concept which is almost the same to Marionet.js, but um, back then, I'm not sure there was something like Marionet.js, um, but it turned out our uh, self-written um, framework was, in fact, a really bad idea. <laughs> um, and um, with Backbone, um, you end up with a big tree of views, usually. And um, for example, um, we have in, had in our application a documents view, which has a pagination and an options bar where I can, for example, um, um, do some bulk actions on, on some doc documents. W these documents are rendered in a document list and um, I have a given amount of docs which I'm rendering. And there's code. Um, so that is what uh, one of our old um, backbone views looked like in a bit simpli uh, si simply, uh, simplify, in a simply, how is it called? In a simple form. <laughs> <laughs> so um, basically we're saying, hey, um, we want to use that template and um, we are using, uh, and I think that's also similar to uh, Marionet.js, uh, something like uh, before render hooks, where we just insert our uh, child views in, into, into the template, and, and that then basically creates the views, uh, the tree I'm, I was talking about. Um, but that also means when I want to have, for a given reason, I, 
I don't know, um, want to have a new instance of that pagination view and I need that instance, I end up forcing a render on that documents view and, and what it does, it turtles all the way down and re-renders that whole tree. And um, yeah, as you can imagine, uh, our rendering was a little bit slow. But as you uh, might have noticed, we also have a memory leak there. Because here in my before render call, and that was quite, um, uh, quite a common thing uh, for uh, developers to do, was um, also an event listener which got uh, registered. So with every rendering, we uh, just added a new event listener <laughs> and as you can imagine, um, the cognitive load a developer um, um, experience during de developing a s relatively simple um, v for form for just a replication was quite high. And there was another problem we, we usually ran into which is not Backbone's fault and it's not jQuery's fault, it's really us, but um, it was so easy. So, <laughs> so in, 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 uh, in this view, uh, which is uh, a compaction view, which is basically just a button, um, we have an event uh, listener, which listens for a click, and when I click that button, um, my uh, callback fires, and um, then um, I'm running through that function, and I'm dis the button itself disables the button with that function, and after that, it makes an asynchronous um, um, Ajax, uh, an Ajax as asynchronous call um, to uh, the database, and um, does some some things, does some things there, um, then it gets back this uh, um, um, a success mes message, hopefully, then the button view is also um, showing a global notification coming down from the, from the top of the page to the user, and after that, the button itself changes its state itself again to the enabled state, and we are just... Um, changing the DOM to um, compact view again and, and remove the attribute that the button is disabled. And that's probably something many developers ran into in, uh, for example, jQuery-based applications, and um, I also run, run into that frequently as a developer, just because it's so um, com comfortable to um, do that all in the in the click handler, and um, another thing we really like to do, and um, I also wouldn't uh, recommend that trying that at home, is um, for example uh, storing state in the DOM. Um, for example, in this um, callback handler, um, that happens when I toggle a document in my um, administration view. I'm I'm looking if there's a, uh, if there's a class in the DOM w which rep represents my state if it's a document that's marked for deletion, and if that's the case, I'm adding that to a collection uh, for bulk documents that is going to um, be deleted, and um, then I'm um, running some other operations, and after that I'm. Uh, and in the end, I'm just um, toggling that state back again. <laughs> and you probably can imagine that um, testing all that uh, logic um, with all that initializations in the before render um, method with all that subtrees and the um, logic in the views and the state in the DOM made testing re really, really hard, especially for people that have never written tests or uh, tested a lot um, in JavaScript. And, um, and we also realized at some point, as our application grew and grew, and we had to add more and more features, that the development speed because of those things was not 
the fastest. And so uh, we we um, we, um, we 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 were asking ourselves um, what what can we do now, and that was around nine nine uh, nine months or eight months ago. And uh, we looked at other solutions like Amber and Angular, and Angular 2 was just rising on the horizon. And um, we uh, took a look at them, and it would have meant that we have to have had to throw all of our application basically away. Or, for example, keep our old application, don't add any features, and just build the new complete application over there. And um, we then uh, took a look uh, on React, and we realized, hey, our old backbone views, we can quite easily convert them to React, and we ke can keep all that old backbone models for now that we have that communicate with the server. And we can also keep all the old views which aren't converted yet in the old um, backbone view format. And um, and don't have to rewrite a whole complete new appli application next to the other application, and um, the consequence of that was that we also could keep adding features. And I think that was um, the um, the moment where me and my colleagues were really happy that we didn't choose a monolithic framework in the beginning because. Um, Backbone is basically just a library loosely consistent of models, collections, and views, and you can choose if you want to use them or want, don't want to use them. Um, Flux helped us um, with all the mentioned uh, or m with many of the mentioned problems because we um, we. Um, separated all that async stuff into actions or action creators. Um, all the state, uh, we, we put all the state into the DOM and um, the views where, um, where are now just representations of, of, um, of um, the, the data and uh, they don't have any uh, that much logic anymore. And the new photon, um, for the new photon, we were basically um, able to solve a lot of our issues with React and Flux. Um, and um, because it's, uh, it was easier for us to test, um, the test suite grew from around 60 tests to over 500 unit tests in just those eight months. And we also have a lot of reusable and well-tested co components now, and um, the um, we and the funny thing is that the de overall development speed of the team didn't went down while we were completely refactoring the whole application because <laughs> because uh, the cognitive load and all the bugs added from the from 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 the old way how we wrote our application um, when, when, um, didn't appear any, uh, anymore in, in the reviews, for example. So we, we didn't have uh, so much iterations any, anymore on, on reviews, for example, and that speed uh, uh, things a lot up. So um, that's quite a big soft migration we did. And um, we are almost finished. I would say 80%. And um, so I'm hoping that we will finish it, it this year. But um, you probably know engineers and estimations. <laughs> and basically, that's it. Why um, uh, my team and I uh, really like React. And that's it. Questions and I will repeat them. Thanks for a really nice example. Um, what were the greatest issues when we went to react? Were 
were there any issues at all? Um, one, one of the... Um, uh, <laughs> so, um, the question was, what was uh, one of the bigger issues, um, if there were any, uh, when we migrated to React? And... Um, I think um, because we, we still have basically jQuery everywhere, um, you, it's, it's sometimes easy to, or people try to uh, uh, make a shortcut, for example. And that's something which, which is uh, quite hard to always remind people not to take shortcuts using jQuery or something like that. Another thing which is hard because it's a problem that we just can solve in the end is um, so that these route objects are um, are um, are rendering these views in and those sub views and uh, in on top of that there's a, a router. And we really, really want to use React Router, um, but as we still have uh, old, old um, um, backbone views in our applications, it's not so easy um, to use React Router. So that's, I think, having patience is also uh, quite, quite a hard task, and also to, um, and 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 that can probably. Um, you probably have to, when you start to migrate to React or any other framework or do a big migration, you probably have to um, convince management. And that can be hard, but that can be also quite easy. So um, I can imagine that that um, this can be hard, maybe. But um, I think we, we were quite lucky. <laughs> Sorry. Um, did you do releases with parts of it with React components and the rest of it being handled by Backbone? Um, if we did releases with partly React and partly Backbone, um, yes. So the um, so the blue colored UI on cloudin.com is uh, has gotten their first React component um, last year, December, January. So um, it's in production right now. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> uh, oh that's a good question. What uh, Flux framework we are using? We are using the plain Facebook uh, event emitter implementation without any framework because um, back then we just couldn't decide and we had other problems that were larger. And we are now in retrospective, we are um, quite happy about it because Redux just appeared like, um, like um, the framework for the, how, how is it called? The future. Yeah, the future. <laughs> the, fu <laughs> the future and um, we we are currently uh, taking a close look at Redux, and uh, right now we are just using um, the um, reference implementation by Facebook, which is a little bit uh, more boilerplate. Yeah. So um, you said that you were um, keeping your old models, your backbone models, and in the next slide you talked about. Um, implementing Flux. So, um, have you moved your um, backbone models to Flux, or is it just the state in the DOM and, and uh, in the components which you used, um, which you moved to Flux? Um, so, the question is if we moved our backbone models to um, Flux, and um, I would say it depends. So most of our backbone models are, are still there communicating with the server. Um, um, sometimes there are a few stores which put um, 
backbone collections into the into the store. Um, yeah, and um, I think if if we decide to get really rid of the backbone models, it's um, at the end of our migration path. Um, because um, the the main issue we had was not the um, network communication, which the um, backbone model solved for us right now, but the um, rendering issues and the the other issues I, I I showed. Okay, but for new features you are using Flux. Yeah, uh, we we are. Um, um, So uh, our background model, uh, the question was if we are using Flux for um, uh, new implementations. And we are also, uh, and um, we are sometimes putting, uh, so, oh, we are putting um, quite often um, backbone models from back backbone collections into the store, uh, for example, as this collection. And um, so the data is in, inside the store, and the action is fetching that data for us, or the action creator is fetching that da that data for us, and then putting it into the store. Did you change the way you bundle your JavaScript? Do you use a webpack and browser reply? Question is if we did change the bundling and for our application, and we um, use still require.js. We didn't change the bundling. We we investigate Webpack right now, um, and we uh, ho hooked the uh, React tools, or now uh, it would be Babel, into our. Um, Build chain. <laughs> so um, we didn't change the way how our AMD model modules are loaded right now. Um, if that answers the question, okay. Yeah. Nobody. Okay, there are stickers over there. So. <laughs> <laughs>